Bang! Neves Knives, I'm Jared, and this video is about five clone knives versus the real thing, the thing that they are cloning. Now, I'm going to be as honest as possible about whether or not the clone did it better or if the real deal is better. So starting this list off, we have the Lion Steel SR1. So the Lion Steel SR1 Italian made knife. It is a Moletto, uh, yeah, Moletta design. And it is an aluminum frame lock that's built similar to how you'd expect a titanium frame lock. Um, super solid knife, but I've heard in testing these things do not hold up that they are extremely weak and they fail very easily. And that's probably why they put this secondary lock on here because they know that. It does feel very solid. Um, it is very smooth. Um, I can tell it is on washer action. And it is a very robust knife. Now, the clone to this is the Ganzo 733. Now, some would argue, you know, it's... You know, I, and I would argue this too. It, it's not a, um, a counterfeit. They took the, the the blade design, the blade, the shape, the design, dif, use a different locking system. So yes, they stole the design, but it's not a, a counterfeit. Meaning that you can tell that this is a Ganzo all day, every day. You're never gonna think that nobody's gonna be able to sell this to you as the Lion Steel. However, you can tell they definitely took the design. Now, in hand, I'll be honest, the Ganzo did it better. I've already thought about this quite a bit. Uh, the action on the Ganzo is better. The lock is 100% more solid. I would, I would bet any amount of money that this would fail far before this access lock would fail. Because access locks are extremely strong. Um, and Ganzo does access locks very well. It's just, it is what it is. No matter how you feel about, uh, clones and stolen designs, Ganzo does very strong access locks. And this is one heck of a strong one. Very solid. I feel a smidgen, and I'm talking about, I'm like really cranking on it, a smidgen of play and it's already gone. So it just kind of depends. And that's how access locks are. Um, almost every single Benchmade you ever grab will do the same thing. And a lot of the Ganzos don't. Um, they have bigger Omega Springs. That's the reason why. They use bigger, thicker Omega Springs. Now, the grind is a bit... Uh, they're about the same. I want to say that the, the Lion Seal might be a little slicier, but I don't think so, actually. Yeah, it might be a little bit slicier, but either way, um, this one has bearings, I believe. I'm not positive. I didn't take it apart, but it feels like it's on bearings, but it might not be. I'm not positive about that. We do have, um, they do make some with, oh no, no, this is washers. They did it with washers. So this is washers. Ganza just does a good job. Um, I hate to, you know. It just is what it is. So, Ganzo definitely won this one. Now, this is a lot more premium. This you could probably get for 20 bucks. This, uh, 160 I believe. Maybe less. Maybe more, maybe less. I'm not positive. But let's get to the next one. Oh, let's check the steels really quick. This is 440C. And the Lion Steel is D2. So, so arguable, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of people would pick, would pick 440C over D2. Some would pick D2 over 440C. Uh, that's kind of, uh, you know, whatever you want. Now, next we have the Rat 1, the Ontario Rat 1. Awesome knife. Now, this is a very iconic knife. Um, super solid, heck of a work knife, and... A liner lock, as strong as the way Ganzo does them, is hard to beat. Look at how strong the lockup is. Their lockup is very, very solid. And I've seen these things tested hardcore. 
Um, I've even tested them pretty hardcore, but I've seen them tested beyond what I've ever tested them. And they've smoked the competition. Um, Ergos are amazing, really good work knives. These, This is one of the best work knives. It really is. It's a super solid knife, great grind, great geometry, awesome ape, but they do make a D2 version. Next, we have, or versus, the Ganzo D727. Now, right off the bat, the Ganzo is a little bit smaller. It's in between, because there's a Rat 2 that's a small knife. Um, this is kind of in between the Rat 1 and the Rat 2. But this is on bearings and is the action is way better than the Gan or than the, the, the Rat 2. I'll say that. This is uh, well, it, it depends on the action you like. This still is really good. They have thumb stud action. It does wind up getting pretty smooth for washers. But this is on bearing, so it's just ridiculously smooth. Lock up, super solid. Um, what do we have over here? Four, four, no, D2 on this one, and then this one's OS 8. Now, I would argue that OS 8 is not better than D2. I would technically argue that D2 is better than 440C, but 440C is definitely more stainless, and in most in a lot of situations, you would see D2 getting about the same results cut test-wise, especially with these overseas companies, uh, D2. So, but anyways, um, regardless, the D2 definitely wins in this, in my opinion. Uh, 440C would be more of uh, like a, a 9CR similarity. Um, I'll say it would probably be a little bit less than that. Um, the Ergos and everything, they're very similar, but this is a little bit smaller. This is definitely larger. Um, they're, they're very close. I would argue that the lock on the Ganzo would definitely be stronger, but these things are so tough that I'd love to see it. <laughs> but yeah, a liner lock's going to fail before an access lock. It just is what it is, even though... This is an incredible, incredibly strong access lock, and I would probably argue that the Rat 1 might actually beat it through actual testing, but if it was just based on lock strength, the Ganzo would win, most likely. Um, but yeah, this is a tough one. I, I'll just say that this is a really cool knife, um, you know, as just a knife, but I'm going to give it to the Rat 1 um, dang it. It's tough. It's tough. This is too, too tough of one. I, I'm going to give him even score, even score. I can't really, I can't, you know, it's tough, man, because they're both, they're both really good. Next, the Asher Sentry. Now these knives by Asher are very well done. Um, this particular one is on bearings, and I believe this is the two. It might even be considered the Asher Nomad 2, but it's a harpoon blade shape. It does have a fuller. You can use it, but it's, yeah, you can use it. Um, cool little knife, similar to the bug out size, the Benchmade bug out, deep carry clip, awesome little knife, strong lockup, um, good ergos, great, you know, medium sized work knives. Now, the clone version is the IKIV knife. I'm not sure the, 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 the number or anything like that, but IKIV. Um, <laughs> I, I, I could take some guesses right now of where this came from and what happened with this, but I'm just, I'm not even going to do it. But I'm just going to say this right now that the Asher killed this. This feels janky. The lock is super solid. I'll give it that, but the lock is really sticky. It does have a nice ting every once in a while, but the bearings just, it feels like, you guys hear that? If it almost sounds like there's parts in it broken. This is super solid. A little tiny bit of stick, but I don't mind that on an axis lock. I actually like a little bit of, just a little tiny bit. Not a lot of stick, a little bit of stick. It says that there's no lock um, blade rock. Super smooth. Yeah, 
this is definitely more false shut, but <clears throat> it feels like that because it feels like the bearings are loose. Yeah, and the thumb studs aren't... Maybe they're the same thumb studs, but they feel more slippery on this. Maybe it's just me, though. I'm not sure. Either way, I'm going to give it to the Asher 100% just because this one feels more janky. Next, we have the Hogue Ritter RSK MK1 or the Benchmade Grip Tilling. Either one. Doesn't matter, but we'll go with the Hogue. Um, we have a Hogue Ritter. Oh, hoo -hoo, very smooth. So is my, my uh, Benchmade Grip Tillion. Both are super solid, um, USA made, awesome knife, versus the Ganzo 733. And you can see that this is trying to look just like the, the original Benchmade Griptilian, not the Sheep's Foot version. And let's check it out. Very solid. I like the G10. The G10 does feel good, like good quality. It feels very solid, nice and comfortable in the hand. Very stiff though. And one other issue I'm noticing that these two absolutely don't have at all is this access lock is tough to get to. It's like it's these ridges are taller than the access lock itself. So it's like, you gotta like squeeze in there and get it. And that drives me nuts. Um, what steel is this? 440C. So yep, the real deal takes it. Even though there's a huge price difference here. We're talking probably anywhere from 16 to 20 bucks here. And this is uh, what, like 160? 20 CV G10, um, USA made, and then S30V and uh, FRN. This was originally 140. I'm not sure what it is now. I know the price went up a lot. It's probably like 170, 180 bucks now or something. I don't know. But I'm going to say it won because the access lock is tough to get to. It's not smooth at all. It is solid, but you got you got to like throw it to uh to get it to open and close unless if you do it two-handed and i think they still did a good job i think this would be a great work knife a great beater knife for sure and it would probably smoothen out because i guarantee they have teflon and phosphor bronze the stop pin is a good size but the stop pin is far bigger on the real deal so they do have a good size stop pin on this but bigger on this axis lock Same size. So same size access lock bar, but bigger stop pin on the bench made. Um, same with the, the Hogue. Bigger. All right. Next, or last actually, right? We have the Spyderco PM2. Now, technically, the clone is... I think it's basically cloning the stretch, but the Ganzo, what is this one? The G733, 440C on bearings. The action is really good on this. This is very solid. It feels really good in the hand. Um, they actually give you a sharpening notch, but it's kind of pointless. Because they use the plunge grind to go down to the edge. That doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't they have done it just like this, right? And then, so the plunge, see how this is, this is a plunge grind right here. From the thickest part, this ramp from here to the grind, that's a plunge grind. Now you see on this one how it just goes straight down to the grind. It doesn't taper, just goes straight down to the grind. Well... That's why Spider Co's works out okay, because it doesn't taper. When you taper it, that's when you can get a smile because you're gonna hit the plunge grind, not the, you know, you're not gonna hit this really. You're gonna hit it if there's a plunge. And you see how I sharpened it right up to it right there? 
So that's not an issue. That's why Spyderco's um, grinds are okay. Now, some people do like to put a notch right there, which is fine. It stops you from hitting this part on your stone when you're sharpening, but you're never going to get a smile. Now, with this, you're going to get a smile. So I guess they stop it from you hitting your stone on it, but... And I guess you could just use a Dremel and just continue going up. But either way, the blade shape is cool. It's kind of like the Stretch 2 blade shape. I do love that blade shape. The action is stupid smooth. You can tell it's on bearings. Very solid. Maybe a hint of up and down. But just a hint, and that's how... Uh, access locks are and it's not bad at all like and it does not mean the lock is weak pm2 is super solid rock solid and very smooth even though it's on washers already i gotta give it to the pm2 um but the stretch technically is a back lock now if this was versus the stretch i love the stretch i really do but the axis lock, I'm going to give it to the axis lock. So compared to the actual stretch, I'd probably say that this kind of wins overall. Not saying it's a better knife. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just saying, you know, functionality and everything. I'm not a huge back lock fan. Uh, triad locks are cool, but I'm just not a big back lock fan. Um, but I will say this has a very small stop pin. Ooh, that might actually take it off the map, actually. Very small stop pin. Look at the size stop pin difference between this PM2 and this. This is the stop pin right there, right on top of my finger. Look at that size difference. Holy cow, this is massive compared to this. Look at how big that is. Compared to this little jank. Anyways. Um, I will say this. The Ganzos do a really good job. They really do. You know, I'm not going to be biased in any way or anything like that. They do a really good job. Super solid knives. Great for work. Uh, but in this case, the real deal definitely did it better. But this is still really good. So for the money... Yeah, it's hard to argue when you talk about for the money. I think these are $16 or something. And super solid knife. I have the um the one that people say is the Benchmade 940 clone. Um, I would say it's closer to the Contigo because it is way bigger. But I love this knife. I, I worked with it. You can really see I've abused the heck out of this knife. This knife has been through a lot. And it has gotten to the point to where now, yeah, it's got some rattle. Um, no side. I mean, it does have a tiny bit of side to side, but I could tighten the pivot. The action's really good. But if I put new Omega Springs in this, it would take away a lot of the play. Right now it does have quite a bit, but it's still super solid. And I would argue I could probably still baton with it just fine. It is a super tough knife. And I personally, the size and just the knife, I kind of like it better. Not saying I like it better than the 940 because I love the 940. And I understand what they were trying to go with and everything. So I do... I'd love to see a 940 the size. Not the Contigo, though. Like, literally just a 940, you know, this this size, perfectly like this. This would be a great size. I think the Contigo is a little bit bigger than this. But they're both good. They're both really good. The Benchmade is a little bit better because of a couple reasons. One, the access lock is easier to use. It, you can grip it a lot easier. The, these are rounded, and I don't like that. They're a little slippery. Now, they work just fine. But you can feel that the Benchmade, and this one normally came in, a, um, came in um, carbon fiber scales. This is the titanium aftermarket ones that suck. But normally, this thing feels very solid. It does have a you know, a little bit better built feel. Um, these do have a really good tough feel to them though. So I, I don't, <laughs> it's tough, man. They do so, Ganzos do such a good job, man. And I hate to do that because I know, you know, I love Benchmades, man. Um, 
but regardless, um, yeah, I do think for the price, what you're paying, especially when we're talking about something like this, you know, the, the benchmates are starting to get outrageous with their prices. Like, it's hard to argue that $280 for this or $1920 for this. Like, you could buy how many of these? How many of these? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not trying to make that argument. I've already done that video. Um, and I remember what I said about it. So I'm not, uh, not going to sit here and try to have that argument. But it's hard to debate when, you know, you could sit there and replace this 10 times over. Um, but this is USA made. You do have the warranty. So you can, and you do have to say something about that. It does have a really good warranty. You can replace all the parts. You can actually get aftermarket parts for it and make it even more expensive. Um, and they are good quality. Uh, I will say this, though. Benchmade's uh, Omega Springs are way tougher. I've never broken an Omega Spring on a, um, on a Ganzo, but I have broken many on Benchmade. So just is what it is. But that's the video, guys. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Peace.